I, I mean, I really think we're on an exponential uh, improvement path of um, artificial intelligence. And the, and the number of smart humans that are developing AI is also increasing dramatically. I mean, if we look at the history of AI, the core of the algorithms which we are using today, they're going back to those from 50s and 60s, and that's like 70 years ago. And since then, we experienced two AI winters, one in 1983 and another in 1993, when everyone thought that AI is dead. And nowadays, AI is experiencing exponential growth. So what made the difference? Actually, there were two things appearing availability of data and availability of compute. Compute was scaling with a more slow, and more compute power allowed to train larger models. And certain things became possible only at the large model size. If you take our favorite GPT-3, which is a natural language processing model which uses deep learning to write poetry, to write programming code, and just to communicate, it features massive 175 billion parameters. And then there is a Megatron Turing model by Microsoft with 530 billion parameters. And the next one is GPT-4 coming out in the next days. It will feature 100 trillion parameters. This will already surpass our brain. Just imagine how much compute power we will need to train it. And here is where AI chips come into the game. So, why everyone is building AI chips and what is gonna happen next? At first, I actually asked this to GPT-3, and she says, There are a number of reasons for this trend. AI is one of the hottest areas in tech right now. AI chips offer the promise of improved performance over traditional CPUs and GPUs. And she is right about it. The problem is, the chips which we are familiar the most, like CPUs, these are general purpose chips. And general purpose chips dominated the industry for a long, long time. That's why we have giants like Intel and AMD. CPU is built in a way to be able to solve all kinds of problems. We are using it for surfing internet, for watching videos, it also analyzes instructions and fetching the data from the memory. And that's the reason why the control module is so complex and the compute power is relatively weak. Now there are GPUs, which are more special purpose. It's used for gaming, rendering videos, and let's say architecturally it's built in a way to perform lots of math in parallel and fast. In a GPU, the control module is relatively small, and the most of the area is taken for a compute. That's why GPU is much more powerful in terms of compute power. GPU appeared to be there just in the right time for the uprising of AI. That's why it was the first choice for AI, and still they're extensively used for AI workloads. But with GPU, we still face limits, especially in compute scalability. And now it's expected that the next big leap in AI will happen when we have larger models, even bigger data set, and more compute power. That's why everyone is so excited about this and everyone is building AI chips. When I say AI chips, I mean a specialized class of chips, which is designed in a particular way to accelerate artificial intelligence and machine learning tasks. In simple words, AI hardware have particular logic, so circuits, which are implemented on chip in order to accelerate vector multiply accumulate operations at hardware level, not at software level. And when we make it at hardware level, then magic happens. We get huge gain in performance and spend less energy. Just to give you a feeling, in comparison to a GPU, when we are using a dedicated AI hardware, we get a factor of 100 to a factor of 1000 improvement in speed. If you would like to have more details on this, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel where I explain it in the details. As you know, a part of technology is another my passion is to invest money. The AI chip market is expected to grow by 40% per year, according to Allied Market Research. If in 2021 the AI chip market was valued at $8.1 billion, now it is expected to reach $194 billion by 2030. It is by 25 times. This attracts many new startups to appear every year and a lot of investors' money flow. Here are just some of them. Some of them I already featured in my videos, like Brainchip, 
Mythic, also GraphCore. GraphCore are great guys. But there are also those I haven't covered yet. I will not go too much into the details here, but I'm starting a newsletter. It will be free and you can subscribe. And in the first letter, I will cover all the startups and a bunch of more with some additional info from me. So if you're interested, just subscribe. The link will be below. Now back to AI chips. When we talk about AI chips, it's actually important to distinguish between two different chip flavors. Usually what happens, for instance, if we take as an example autonomous driving, at the base we will have CNN, so convolutional neural networks, and you train it on a large data set in cloud for many months. And for that, we use large AI accelerators. For instance, Tesla originally was training neural network models on NVIDIA 800 and peer GPU racks, but now they are building Dodge supercomputer by themselves, which is not a GPU anymore, it is a dedicated AI hardware accelerator. And this is a huge machine which occupies a lot of space and consumes lots of power, and this is the first class of AI chips so-called AI accelerators. Now, let's assume you trained your model and you want to use it for self-driving. Here, you cannot use cloud anymore because it's too slow. You cannot send the information about the road situation to the cloud because of the huge latency. On the road, the decisions have to be done really quickly. It's very important. So sometimes stuff should be decided within like milliseconds. For this, you get another AI chip in your car where your pre-trained AI model will be uploaded. For that, Tesla car features FSD chip, full self-driving chip. And this chip is small and consumes moderate power and it can make decisions really quickly without internet connection. And this is so-called inference application. And this is another class of AI chips, which we call AGI chips. Actually, these are two completely different group of chips because on AI accelerators, all the training and learning is happening, while on the AGI chips, not. We just upload existing model and run it there. Eventually, we will come to the point where AI models will be deployed everywhere everywhere in your phone, in farms, in factories, and these models will be pre-trained on demand. I think there will be the whole market for pre-training such models on demand, maybe with the uh, licensing business model. All our gadgets and desktop computers will get AI engines, and actually some of them already got one, like my M1 laptop, which I'm using for editing this video and for a bunch of other creative tasks. So it's already got a neural engine. All conventional chips, like embedded microcontrollers, will also get a dedicated AI acceleration block. And here I would love to see more open source. This is the chance for Risk 5 And some very soon we will come to the software 3.0, where we will not need to write a single line of code anymore. You can just type something like, please write me a program which takes values from this table, queries for this result and process it and put it in this format here and the AI generates the program. Which means we will not write software anymore. We'll just type what we want software to do. And this is actually a concept very similar to the GPT-3. OpenAI's GPT-3 can be creative, it can communicate to you, write code, write guitar sheets, And it's doing all of this without being trained for it. So you can write your task and she will understand you. And this is actually a new programming paradigm because you are using prompt to program GPT-3 to do new things. And if traditional programming is software 1.0, neural networks is software 2.0, then prompting might be what will become software 3.0. And then software developers will have to learn how to prompt properly. Honestly, I want to live very long now because I think future is fun. And all of this will be possible with natural language processing. And the next step would be to write models which can do everything. And many people think that language is the key here. And soon we will not need to write models per task like image recognition, language, and so on. We will write models which can do everything. 
but just imagine the size of such a model. That's where we need all of this compute, we need powerful AI accelerators. You know, there is a lot of debate around what is more important for achieve AGI language or image processing. I tend to think that it is language because image can be described by language. An AI field seems to go in the same direction as well, but we will never create powerful AI without powerful compute resources. That's why it's so exciting and so important. That's why everyone is building AI chips, because in AI, hardware is as important as software. As I mentioned, I prepared a summary of the key ideas from this video and some additional info from me, and this will be included in my new newsletter. So if you're interested to see it, subscribe to my newsletter and see you in the next video. Ciao!